Hey, this is Miracle Max. Welcome to Rise of Kingdoms. And we crushed the Crusader camp. And let me tell you, that is uh, a tough one, tough one. So one thing to consider when you're comparing the Lost Kingdom to your regular kingdom map is everything happening is in Zone 1 is equal to what we're used to in Zone 3. So these small looking insignificant um, items, buildings on the very outside of the map are just as hard to take, it seems, as the Lost Temple was. So I'm wondering what's going to happen when we get further and further in towards the center. Um, because, man, it took us several tries to take down this uh, Crusader camp. And something else I will say about it is um, we're experiencing a ton of lag on this new map. Um, consider that there are uh, eight kingdoms in here, so eight times the amount of traffic that you experience in your home kingdom. And when we have a uh, big event like taking um, a structure like this, the number of people online is just um, making it impossible to record those videos live. Um, I, I've gone through my uh, recording um, abilities, lowered the quality quite a bit, and no matter what I've done, I experience a lot of lag. So I'm hoping that as this uh, kingdom and server get a little older, that they'll be able to figure out some ways to um, cut down on the usage and make it so I can record these. Um, before I show you the the data on taking down this Crusader camp, I wanted to show you again some of these ruins that are popping up because I love them. I wish they were in our home kingdoms. I get why they're not, but man, getting these combinations in one ruin are pretty incredible. So we have troop attack and march speed. Uh, that's a normal troop health. Commander experience 15%. Another troop attack and march speed. Action point recovery. Stone gathering. Action point recovery and commander experience gain, which is awesome for the Karak ceremony that's going on right now. Um, did I get them all? I think I got them all. So some really cool combinations that we're having. Um, love... Uh, love playing with them within this game and boy this 25% uh, gathering speed that we gained by having this become part of our territory is great we're also getting kingdom honor points and alliance honor points um, and those play into these rewards that are happening the crusader achievements and um, once you go into the alliance ones uh, the rewards are based on those two things, Alliance Honor Points and Individual Honor Points, and then the Kingdom is based on Kingdom Honor Points and Individual Honor Points. So um, racking these up has been been great. Um, you know, the rewards are minimal at the beginning and they get bigger the higher levels you hit. So if we look at this Kingdom's Might, for example, how many levels are there? 12, 13, 14... Looks like 14. So we're getting some stars, some gold keys, a lot more speed ups, um, a lot of action points. So, you know, you're getting points for doing the things you're normally doing and you're getting extra rewards for it. And I cannot complain about that. All right, so let's look at the data on this Crusader camp. And when it came down to it, we found it impossible to take with one rally, even with 2 million troops and we needed two alliances to build up next to it and go at it with two rallies. We could not send individual troops at it because the rage regeneration that occurred and the healing that occurred were pretty insane and caused us a lot of trouble. So if we go into um, our favorites and I show you first the scouting report, uh, if you notice we had uh, two million tier 5 cavalry units as our enemy and the four skills that this leader the leader ended up being Hannibal Barca and the four skills this leader brought um, was a massive uh, rage 
Um, it did require rage to reach 3,000 before it hit, um, but that happened very quickly, and this was a long, long battle, and so that rage did a lot of damage to our troops. You know, we had to have two full alliances on with lots of reinforcements to rallies to make this happen. Um, the second skill increase skill damage by 30% after a skill is used. So we have a ramping up happening of the skill damage. Heals 10% of the units led by this command after a skill is used. Now, 10% doesn't seem high, but when you're talking about 10% of 2 million troops, that's 200,000 troops healing, um, which is as much as a level 60 commander can take. So that is the equivalent of one player's army being healed um, every time the skill is used. And then this fourth skill just destroyed us. So for every 240 seconds, that's four minutes, um, the commander is in battle, their attack increases by 10,000%. So that would mean, 10,000% means if they were doing um, 500 in damage regularly, after this uh, four minutes and every four minutes, their attack is increased from that 5,000 up times 100. So add two zeros to that, 500,000. So, I mean, it, it's hard to explain how big these numbers were and how much damage they were doing, but boy, um, this was a tough one. So be ready for this, plan well. Uh, make sure you have at least two alliances built up next to um, that fortress. You know, we've been building and tearing down repeatedly so that we can attack these. Um, if you notice up here, this was the last one taken. We had a second alliance build their fort right next to it so that we could take that one. Um, there are four in this area. We did the same thing. Um, over here, we had two alliances build up next to it, and then we did the same thing here uh, when we took this one. If you see um, our territory, the blue territory, we actually had to build up next to it to help take it down. So again, this is not something that one alliance can take on its own unless you have a ton of whales in your alliance and can somehow um, compete with that 2 million T5 cavalry. I mean, I know, you know, that means infantry commanders. It means bringing infantry armies. Um, I do recommend some commanders with your highest nuker skills um, available, uh, whether that is Genghis Khan with his new uh, skill, whether it's Minamoto. Um, without knowing what commanders you guys have in your alliance, uh, it's hard to make recommendations, but you're going to want to take this down fast. So the highest damage that you can do um, with those commanders, uh, that's really, really, really important in this. All right. One more report we can look at, and that is the battle log. And the battle log goes on and on and on and on. And as I was trying to scroll through, scroll through it to get to the end, um, it just never ended. But we'll look at troop buffs first so you can get an idea of what's happening. Um, there is no backup commander, so it is just Hannibal Barca. Um, but some pretty, pretty good um, buffs happening on their part. And we had Minamoto and Tsao as our leaders for our alliance. I'm not sure what uh, the other alliance that helped us had. Um, if I can find that out, I'll leave it in the comments. Um, so there's that. And then the battle log. Um, let's go down a few levels. There's our Minamoto. I'm trying to scroll down until it shows there. Uh, Hannibal Barca for you, just so you have not just my word, but you have, there it is, Hannibal Barca on turn seven, um, decreases all of our damage and our defense. And, you know, if you'll have some patience with me, I'll keep scrolling. We'll figure out how many turns this actually took. And remember, remember this was with two full two million rallies and with reinforcements constantly and we just kept hitting and hitting and hitting um, and you know took several times to take it down um, 
any time that something brand new comes to the game and none of us really know how to handle it until we watch some other people go through it. Uh, lots of trial and error. So what turn are we on now? So we're on turn 61. So like I said, this, this made the Lost Temple um, seem easy. And it may just be because we were inexperienced. We've seen the Lost Temple taken so many times that we all know the game plan for it. And this was a first time. Um, we were the first in our kingdom to try and take it, so we didn't get to watch anyone else. We're already on turn 87. And again, this just keeps going on and on and on and on. Um, never seemed to hit an end to it. And it, recording uh, me scrolling, I know is super, super exciting to you. This is what you've been waiting all day for. Um, I'm going to stop scrolling at turn 100. Again, it just, uh, there's no end to it, and there's no way to scroll fast. Um, we kept getting hit, we kept reinforcing, and somehow we survived. All right, so that is it on this. Um, I am a collector on this video. The next video, just to give you a preview, is as we've gone through um, the kingdom events, um, we've just finished an eye for an eye, which was controlling and a crusader, crusader camp. And the next objective is to control the crusader fortress. So the crusader fortress opens, and there's one of these per kingdom, one per zone. So it is all the way over here in the corner, and the Crusader Fortress uh, opens for us to attack it in 14 hours and 35 minutes. That will be, let me look at my watch, for um, 11 UTC, um, sounds about right. And um, this building, uh, currently the largest alliance in our, uh, uh, in our kingdom, is set to take it. Um, I will be hopefully hopping over and attempting again to record it. Don't know how much luck I'll have. Um, take a quick peek at the ruins around here, see if we have anything else that's interesting. There's a troop attack, troop defense, commander experience gain. You know, the only combo we're used to seeing in our regular kingdoms is the, looks like that, nothing more exciting is the research and building one. And here it seems that there's quite a few more. So um, let me take you in real quick, let you see the information on the uh, Crusader Fortress. And just one thing to remember on this is there's a three-stage reconstruction. So the first reconstruction will happen um, in f 14 and a half hours, and then we'll move on to stage two and stage three. Um, so that's it. This will be what the next video covers. Um, I will say this again, and I, I said it in my last video. Um, the content I'm coming out with for The Lost Kingdom is based on you. It's based on your comments and your questions. All of this is new. Everything on the screen is new. I, I've seen it every day now for a week, um, but for you, your only glimpses are when I make a video. So if you see something that you want more information on, leave a comment for me and I would be happy to answer your question. And if I get several people asking for the same thing, I'd be happy to make a video on it too. All right, thank you for spending a little bit of your time today with me. Um, if you like this video, like it. If you uh, want to see more in The Lost Temple, please subscribe. And for those of you who have, I really appreciate it. This channel is growing slowly and I'm just having fun playing the game and sharing with you what I am learning. All right, go enjoy your day. Thanks so much.